Summer Series, which is in the ministry here at St. Patrick's. Really awesome to see all of you tonight. Um, my name is Anna Warnemont, and I'm the new Formation Support Specialist at St. Patrick's. So if you guys have any questions that maybe, um, about your child's and their or their formation um, experience, you guys can go ahead and email me, or of course, Tammy and Rob will be able to help you out too. But um, I'm excited tonight to welcome Tra uh, Tracy and Mike Plankers. They're giving our first talk of the year power series on coming together as a family. So um, hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, if you at any point want to run out and grab water or coffee, it'll be out there the whole time. Um, and then rest your the jars um, through, the, through the kitchen on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much for um, allowing us really to come here tonight. It's uh, it's an honor. My wife, Tracy, and I have been members here at St. Pat's since uh, 90, 1992, I believe is when we joined. Um, we met each other 30 years ago, um, kind of in that kindergarten range of, of age. Um, but we, we are... Really, we're just um, very honored uh, we were asked to do this and didn't really know what to expect. And, um, and here we are, and yesterday was a, was a really good, um, I felt, we felt it was a very good um, message that, that we, we shared what, we, what we've done and what we're doing. Um, and hopefully, um, through the, some of you will share today as well, um, what, it, what it's like in your family to pray. Because today's focus is a family that prays together, stays together. And Tracy and I, like I said, have been together uh, for 30 years. We were married in 1991. And I'm a police officer in the city of Coon Rapids, currently assigned to investigations. Uh, Tracy is a benefit counselor and an insurance agent. Um, so our schedules um, throughout the years have been pretty crazy. And we have two wonderful children. Joshua is uh, 25 and uh, married last in September. Sarah is 24, they'll be 25 and 26 um, this December. So we had almost Irish twins, I think is what they would call them, 53 weeks apart. So um, nice little, oh, there we are. <laughs> um, and Joshua is married and we are going to be uh, grandparents for the first time any day. So our due date is October 15th. Let's just talk about um, who we are, and like I said, we'll, we'll do some, hopefully some small group uh, discussion um, type exercises, so to speak. And our understanding is that we have around 45 minutes or so um, to talk and to facilitate this, um, the importance of, of that prayer in our lives. Um, we just hope to share a little bit, and you guys share as well, um, so we can get something Hopefully, fruitful. And we forgot again. What? So we did this yesterday. <laughs> Try to be organized and have an outline and stuff. Let's start with prayer. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you so much for bringing us together tonight and getting us all here safe. Just ask that you uh, whisper into the little one's ears tonight, especially. Just continue to protect all of us and help us realize the, the true gift that we have in our relationship with you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Father and Son. Amen. So, a little bit about that's kind of the, a real quick thing on, on Tracy and I from um, together for so long and have a wonderful family. I was raised, at, well, Tracy was raised Catholic as well. I was the cradle Catholic at Epiphany. Um, Back then it was second grade through ninth grade, and was not, uh, it was difficult. And the, the, the reason it was difficult is, back then, the society of, of schooling, they didn't have industrial arts at Epiphany. So in sixth grade, I went to Epiphany, waited for a bus, got on the bus for the first two hours of sixth grade, went to the junior high for industrial arts, Came back to Epiphany for the last four hours of the day. Seventh grade, two hours of Epiphany, bust over to the Thune Rapids Junior High, two hours of industrial arts, back over to Epiphany. Then ninth grade, ended the day at Junior High. So it was it was pretty mixed up. Um, and the uh, that format of 
of religious education back then, which I think some of you could probably relate with, is what kind of what kind of prayer was there with my with my family? My parents were wonderful, are wonderful parents, and a great example. But it was prayer before meal, prayer before bedtime. And that was it. Then it was off to Epiphany, and you're getting taught, right? You get go learn your faith at Epiphany. That's what we're putting you in that school for. So. Tracy was, uh, well, your brothers, a little bit of St. Tim's, so, but both raised Catholic, and, and here we are. Okay, um, so just to talk a little bit about um, some of the things we've done, I guess, to grow our faith since we met. Early on, before the kids, we were involved in a tech program, which was basically a three-day getaway um, encounter with, with Christ, so um, it really kind of secured our relationship and our faith, and that's uh, we built our, I guess, our life on that. Um, like Mike said, we joined St. Pat's back in 92. Our kids didn't go into a picnic for a few years. There it just worked out because of the life schedule. And then we've been involved in many mis ministries here, so probably too many to name. But anyway, um, so Country Fest, you may have seen us around for that. We've done some different Bible studies. Um, and Mike sings in the nights. And, um, a few other things, but most recently we're doing, um, it's called a Marriage in Christ. It's a five-night seminar for couples to go through, and it's basically building habits of prayer um, into your daily life. And that, that was very enriching for us, and so we kind of did a, I guess a little pilot program with a couple other couples, and then since then we've done two sessions or three? Two sessions. And so, um, so just a beautiful way to, again, bring um, prayer to your daily life with your spouse, and so we'll in invite any of you that would like to participate in that, maybe come January. I, I go back to early on um, when we joined St. Pat's and realizing, hey, I want to want to be a part of this community, and our kids were pretty pretty young, and I one of the duties that I had was teaching the dare program um, at Grand Rapids, and I ended up taking over for one, um, having a spot, and then another guy got promoted, and they needed a, a dare officer to fill in, so I actually taught year round um, at five schools, four of them public, and one of them was at Epiphany, teaching the dare program. And during that time, my the schedule and, and the, the busyness, right, I probably don't have to explain it to you guys, you, get, you understand the busyness and how hard it is with the regiment of society today and the busyness of our kids with activities and everything else. So the, um, the fact that I was working day shift is kind of odd for a police officer, especially young in a career with the with shift work typically where that dare um, instructor position allowed me to basically kind of have a Monday through Friday type schedule and I'm like I want to get involved up here at church so uh, I said up how about we teach confirmation or I teach confirmation so we're, I go in to instruct confirmation and the parents are like but you, you don't, just don't seem old enough to have kids in confirmation I'm like, well, I know my kids are three and four years old but I want to be a part of something up here I want to be part of this community and it was, it was really fun um, to do that, to get involved that early on um, with this community and to see the, the change that has happened throughout all these years. The, um, the, the fact that I was able to connect with that many people and one of the moms from the last group on Sunday, she's like, you talked you talk confirmation back in this day, and she remembered, um, and just that little connection I, mean, I remember her dad. Um, it, it's just these little things that we do um, each and every day that what our prayer life is like as a family, as, as a member of, of a Catholic community. It's not, prayer isn't just hitting your knees and, and saying the Hail Marys and the Our Fathers. Right now, this is prayer time right now. Going to church, obviously, when you have your family day and you're going to church. Um, in the car, right? What are you listening to on the radio? Are you taking any, any advantage of the time in, in the car with the busyness of the schedules that we have? And when Josh and Sarah were um, in, in elementary, you're coming into that elementary school age, I was teaching D.A.R.E. and I'm looking at the four public schools and then Epiphany, and it was hands down a completely different environment at Epiphany than what I, what I remembered as a student there. Um, and to the point of 9-11 happened and 
I was at Adams Elementary that day, and they just chose to ignore it. There was no address to the school whatsoever, nothing. They, did, they just didn't talk about it. And when I picked up Josh and Sarah after school at Epiphany that day, they did the day program. Um, the first thing Sarah said, she came run, run over to me, and she's like, Daddy, we got to pray for all those people that died today in New York. So Epiphany, when that news happened, they, they took action. They, they, they stopped school and they prayed. Um, they, they went into the church, they went into Adoration Chapel, they were praying the rosary. Um, just incredible environment from what we were seeing and what I was seeing in the public school. And sadly, that's what we have as challenges in front of us today as society and what, what they do or don't want us to do as Catholics or even just Christians. Me. Okay. okay. I'm a good listener. Um, one of the one of the things. So, Tracy and I. She said she mentioned that the tech program, and um, I know some of you are familiar with that. The Together Encountering Christ, and that retreat. Uh, weekend. It is. It really is an amazing weekend, and it's a, a very family that we've, we've become a part of. And from an early, early on in our relationship, you know, before Mary, before we're married, and we're able to sit and, and pray together um, out loud. New. It was a new, new thing. I mean, I was, I was taught as a child, and you know, these wrote prayers, you know, the angel of God and the guardian of the year, and the four meal prayers. But to just have open conversation with each other, inviting God to join us in this conversation and what we're doing. Um, for both of us, I think we, we like our, we have our hands-on stuff. Um, it's pretty easy to have the apps on the phone. If you have apps on the phone. You know, it's great, it's right at your fingertips. The hands-on, this uh, Word Among Us, it's got some great meditations, um, reflection stories, it's got all the readings for the Masses every day. And Tracy pointed out uh, yesterday that you know, here we are, we're, we're asked to come and do this about family that prays together, stays together, and this article of Lord Teach Us to Pray is in this month's you know, Word Among Us. And it says, even Jesus learned to pray. If ever there was someone who didn't need to learn to pray, it would be Jesus. After all, he is the Son of God. Surely prayer came natural to him. Well, yes and no. Jesus was fully divine, but he was also fully human. As a man, he had human limitations like our own. He was not born with an adult understanding of his Father or of his own identity as the Messiah. He came to earth as a helpless infant, depending on his parents for everything. In his desire to become like us in all things but sin, Jesus decided to start from square one, even with respect to prayer. That meant that he too had to learn how to pray, and that makes him the perfect example and mentor for us. What did his prayer life look like? Right? It's quite a story, obviously. Um, the, the simpleness of prayer that, that Tracy and I have found in our lives with you know, our immediate family, you know, what it was like for us as Mike and Tracy before children, and married almost two years before Joshua came into the picture. And you have family prayer time as a couple that looks a lot different than when you're starting to raise kids, and then pretty soon the next thing you know, it's middle school, it's high school, and now Tracy and I have been experiencing the empty nest for a number of years. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Um, it's, it's what we do, right? It's what we're doing as parents. We're getting our kids there. So the, what we're asking you to do right now is just the sheets of paper that they passed out. It's three pretty simple simple questions about how often do you have family prayer time? You know, what is, and what does it look like? Um, how do you pray together as a family? And then what are some things maybe that you can do to increase or strengthen that family prayer time in your house? So if you would, just take a few minutes to respond to those questions. Okay, so is that enough time, everybody? Okay. Um, so, like Mike said, you know, what did our family prayer 
look time look like before our kids. Um, like you said, we were involved in retreats. We went to mass together. We had fellowship and dinner with Christian friends. Um, we went to adoration, and we you know we had some of our standard prayers and we did our, our prayer time. So it was um, probably a little more free and flexible. <laughs> Yeah, um, and also with uh, with this tech group friend of ours, we uh, there was probably about 15 or 20 of us where we kind of grounded our faith together back then. Um, we're still friends now, and on an annual basis, we all get together somewhere. Um, there's about 50 of us, and we've just been able to share our faith. So, uh, you know, so we've just been blessed with you know, many different communities um, that we've been able to share. That started back, um, it was called... Mug, the, the, the kind of the couple that kind of came up with the idea of, hey, let's let's continue a, a, a support group for, you know, most of us were single, and Dan and Sue were, were newly married, and like, you know, we should do a, a young adult group. Um, they called it Mug, me, you, and God. And we would get together regularly and talk about our personal life, our prophetic life, and our professional life. And it was just topics of discussion, and like Tracy said, we have now, you know, as we all started to meet each other, and a lot of actual husbands and wives ultimately <coughs> met, and then having kids and families, I think we had 54 total at the last gathering that we had up at the cabin, and it was just, I mean, it's just amazing you know, to, to watch it grow, to see those fruits. It was pretty cool. So it was one of the things that we did as young adults when, before children, but has now continued. Keep going. What else? You got all kinds of stuff. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to ask them what they did? Well, ask them to share what they do, what they did before kids. Yeah. Anybody want to share maybe how their prayer life looked before children? We did not think. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so I was going to, we were, we, we were thinking about the, uh, so Sunday we didn't have the table set up. Um, I guess I was thinking we could, you know, to have, if you have a table, a little exercise and have somebody at a table that's going to write some stuff down and somebody from a table that would talk about some of the things you wrote down. So if we could maybe just share some of the things. And on Sunday, yesterday when we did this, it really, the, the, the parents that were talking back and forth because... Some parents are saying, I just don't know what to do. You know, here's my, here's one of our dilemmas. Here's one of the things that we struggle with. So I, I really would hope I invite you to, to share. What what have you found that works? What is your what does your family prayer time look like? Before dinner and at bedtime. Before dinner and at bedtime. Tracy did a, a nice job with our kids with um, the angel of God, my guardian dear. Nobody knows that part. And she kind of kicked it into gear on the daytime stuff, too. Not, it was nighttime prayer for so long. It's like, hey, we can ask this on the way out the door. And I'll put her on a pedestal because she is a saint married to me. Um, <laughs> shift work. And, and, and my job is very challenging, um, without question. Uh, much like everybody else's jobs. But she, there was a time where she was, you know, really... Having those kids roll out of the roll out of the house and teaching these prayers and having these kids wear that that armor, we'll call it, um, of prayer every time they, they head out the door. This is your segue of, of what? The examples. Oh, examples. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a lot of different things we did, and like I shared yesterday, there's no wrong way to pray, right? I mean, I think even you know, just sometimes our thought is a simple prayer. Um, there was something um, on one of the reflections this weekend that sometimes we just don't know how to pray, kind of like Jesus did there, and you know, I think the Holy Spirit will just take it where it needs to go. So, you know, we're dealing with a, a struggle or a challenge. Um, and sometimes you just you just need to be you know just ask God just please do what you know whatever you need to do so no right or wrong way to pray um, you know we did a lot of different things um, you know I brought the kids to adoration you know even at this stage you know you go in and you just quiet and just let them be um, I made sure we were sitting in the front row um, I was behind a family yesterday and I was sitting towards the back and the little kids are behind you know all these adults just don't see anything. Let them be able to see the 
Philip, um, the, the, the gift of having Epiphany on board for our kids, um, I was teaching the D.A.R.E. program and went, we got to get the kids in at Epiphany. I mean, this is just going to be something that we're going to do to make it a priority. It was difficult. We live up um, over by Lake Netta, and Epiphany will bus up to like Coon Lake, and they considered me an employee um, at Epiphany because there was a waiting list for uh, kindergarten and was able to get the kids in there for um, Sarah's kindergarten and Josh's first grade. And it was just awesome to have them there at Epiphany um, because it, everything was reinforced uh, from what we were doing at home. Uh, I had an opportunity then for a position of narcotics and it was a crazy schedule and I, I, it was something I really wanted to do and the tough decision at that point was to actually pull the kids from Epiphany because they were getting on the school bus at like 6.30. I mean, they were, they were super early getting on the school bus to get to Epiphany. Um, and with the hours of the, the, my new position, I would at least be able to get the kids, you know, breakfast and out to school every day so I could see my children. And that's kind of the, the sacrifice that we made and, and pulled them for Epiphany at that time. And then the challenging times came. Sarah was not, not happy at all. She loved Epiphany and was not, not super excited to go to a public school. Um, did fine, but, you know, she was like, why? Well, <laughs> you tell me, what do you tell your second grader <laughs> when you're going to change their life, right? I'm like, why? Why? Do, why? This doesn't make sense to me. And, and that, that was a challenge. Um, I think we've all been there with with the kids and they ask those profound questions of, of why it doesn't make sense. Um, but the, the support that we have from family as well, I'm very lucky to have not, not, not only just our family family, but what we've grown here at, at St. Pat's, the community and the friends that we've made over the years have really been uh, a blessing, a true blessing. Um, it, it just makes, makes it easier. Um, quite honestly, just that, that prayer life doesn't look like kind of a, a, a men's group that we get together for lunch, um, try to do it monthly. That's prayer time, right? So what, what does your prayer time start to look like, and what would you like it to look like? Um, from, you know, what did it look like before children? Does anybody have adult children? Okay. Someone listening? Yeah. Um, way different. Right, with, with the adult Mommy, children. So, if you could look at your sheets and then maybe come up with a few things um, to share, that would be awesome. Of what your what your prayer time looks like.
help me grow spiritually yeah. because I wanted it more for them. I knew, I knew there was something important there, so then as I wanted to bring them into the faith, I grew a little more. So that was a we had a, um, somebody that shared yesterday that they have a, uh, a prayer, a little prayer box or a prayer crib um, that they'll, they'll have sheets of paper, blank sheets of paper, and have all, family, mom, dad, and the kids, if they have something they want to pray about, they, they write out that prayer and they put it in the, in the little you know, the chest or the crib or the box, whatever it was. And it's those simple things that really can just promote the, the, the what should come so naturally to us, which for most of us I believe it does, um, to pray. But to have those little hands-on exercises, especially for the kids, um, prayer cards, simple. Um, you know, I just got this yesterday when we went in for uh, to practice for the songsters before mass, and, and Denny was handing these things out. And I'm, I'm a St. Michael guy. I, say, I put my medal on and I say my prayer every day. And just to have this, have a card like this, it's a nice bookmark. I mean, you know, to have your kids have have some prayer cards with different saints um, and have that in their book. And we had um, again another another parent shared that it's a challenge that they have that that their kids right now are struggling with getting picked on a little bit um, at school because they have a, a crucifix or they have a Bible with them and they're being they're being soloed out. Um, which I, I believe, my, my job, I see it, it's evil's out there, and I don't think it's too, um, well, family's in crisis. Anybody disagree? Right? But the family life is at, absolutely in crisis. When we have uh, divorce rates that are at that 50% rate, um, my cousin, who was a police officer in, in St. Paul, he said, Mike, he goes, you're going to be a cop. He said, don't get married right away. Be a cop for a few years and don't get married. Um, he said, it just, it's going to be a little easier because the job is really um, dysfunctional. <laughs> um, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> um, met, met her before and, and got married. And it was, you know, the, the, they, they do the, you know, the jobs, right, the professions of the high divorce rates and, and police officers are in that 80% ballpark. Um, and it, it is, it's tragic. And I can tell you right now that 30 years together, we've had our trials, just like everybody else has had their trials. And without God and Christ at the center of our relationship to where we can come back and just get back to it, even when, even if there was weeks that went by, not, not a lot of sharing, we could always get back to that basic and sit down and talk and communicate. So that's the, what, what has worked for us over the years is that. And it's only getting, I, I feel that the, the society is only trying to tear it down more and more. So when we hear things from you guys, it, it does help that we'll share with anybody, any other group that, we're, that we'll be discussing and share it amongst yourselves. What, has there been something that just was a train wreck, but that didn't work at all? Or something that, hey, this is really simple. It's really easy to do. And if there is anything like that, it would be great if you share it. <laughs>
and it would just be random throughout the day that all of a sudden she would, the daughter signed up for this app, on this app, and it would just, you know, a little inspirational quote would be sent to her, um, you know, message on her phone, and she'd get it and she'd forward it on to her mom. And I, I think that's what it was. I never did, never did clarify with her, but um, it's just not that difficult, really, when, when it comes down to it, um, how easy it is to pray, to pray, and how natural it is for all of us. Some of the things that we did um, with, with the kids were, you know, the, the really simple Bible books. Um, again, those, those, are, those are simple things. Um, and really excited to have grandkids to do that with as well. Um, and to just to see these, what we've been able to experience um, from no kids to crazy busyness kids. And, and only having two kids. Um, I know there are some in here that have a lot more than two kids. <laughs> and um, my brother, they, they have five children, and you know, just this, this, it's it's so busy. And where do we find that time to really take that breath, like and relax? And when we were probably at our busiest, it was it was in the car. You just got to take take advantage of that time that you got. And there was um, different friends that the kids would hang out with. Whether they were Catholic or not, it didn't matter. We would still have prayerful conversation in the home. Um, and, and take that time to, to do that. To play KTIS, I was very conscious of, you know, not having just my music on that I wanted to maybe listen to. And I was being conscious of the kids in the car. I just want to help reinforce this. And KTIS had great messages and great music. And before you know it, the kids are singing along with the songs on KTIS. Um, that's not a that's not a popular thing to do in school, right? The kids, not a lot of kids know that or understand that music. Um, so those are things that worked well, I think, for us. Um, I know something I mentioned yesterday is, you know, maybe let your kids take the lead on maybe a new prayer habit that your family wants to do. Let them kind of be in charge of it. So maybe let them be creative and, uh, you know, just start like a prayer box or a prayer jar or, you know, maybe at night at bedtime you, you know, say a special intention for somebody. They might say, well, you know, my friend at school is being bullied. So that type of thing. You'd be surprised what your kids can pull out and, you know, how their hearts are so generous. So. Uh, you know, let your kids kind of be part of uh, maybe something new that you could do. There was, um, so Josh was in high school one year before Sarah, and the whole dinner time was, we, we really focused on, we, we got to make sure we have some dinner time, because that slowly and quickly then would eradicate part of it, and it was just hard to have dinner time. But during these times, we wanted to have a girlfriend. And that didn't happen until at least 16, but it was a different conversation that he's, he likes this girl. You know, I, don't, I still don't understand what it's like to go with someone in middle school, but wherever they go, it's, it's they, they, go, they go with each other. And so I would ask him, you know, who, who is, how'd you meet her? In a class, or is it a friend of a friend? Um, did, did she go to church? Right? I'd, just, I'd ask just random questions. And... Several months into the school year, there was, had been a few different people that you went with or go, go, went out or whatever. And I'd always ask the same kind of questions. You know, do you know if you know about yeah. the church? Do you know anything about the family? And uh, Sarah said, Hey, Dad, are you ever going to let us date somebody who's not Catholic? <laughs> and I said, No, you can date whoever you want. I said, But I think I can speak that it's going to be easier. Once you get to that point of a relationship, that yeah, a common faith is, is actually quite nice to have. Um, and we have seen that with our now adult children. Um, Sarah went to St. Scholastica and graduated um, from there, took a job in Spain, her first year out, and taught uh, over in Madrid. Um, and she's back here now at the U 
completing their master's and then the grow your teacher program um, subbing in uh, District 11 in Minneapolis and she still will work uh, those tech retreat weekends she likes that, that mug group of family that we have extended family um, she, she works some weekends tries to work you know, a couple weekends every year um, it's important for her uh, Josh and our daughter-in-law Lauren they uh, last last year they were married here at St. Pat's and when they got engaged um, in, in talking with them they and they they were in the same class so they knew each other um, had you know some different friends in high school but reconnected at year two in college I believe roughly and um, when that time came to propose to Lauren and they shared it with us talking about the wedding, right? When would you like to be married? And they said, well, we'd like to do it in the fall um, of, of 2018, but we really want Father Bloom to marry us and we want to be married at St. Pat's. And we know that Father Island's gonna kinda have to okay that now with him <laughs> being the pastor here. So whatever, whatever works out for Father Bloom, Father Island, and St. Pat's, then we'll find our wedding date. And I tell you what, it was one of the more proudest moments of my life to have our son and future daughter-in-law to have that priority of saying, this is really what's important to us. And it was. It was just a beautiful ceremony. Um, Deacon George also was up on the altar and had Father Island and Father Bloom and Deacon George up there for that wedding. And it was just, it was just amazing um, just to, to share the fruits right, of, of what, what, we, what we did here and how we were supported here at St. Pat's um, with, with all of our friends uh, and, and family here. The, uh, Josh got involved with the Young Life group. Um, he, back in, when the kids were at, at the high school level, St. Pat's here was a challenge for our youth group because of the representation of so many different schools. We literally, we had Coon Rapids, Blaine, Anoka, Elk River, St. Francis, and we even had a couple Centennial kids. Uh, to Teal Grace, you got all these high schools. That's that's a tough youth group. Um, I was very active with Epiphany's youth group, primarily Coon Rapids and a few Blaine people. But no had the St. Stevens for the most part, so it was really a Coon Rapids-based youth group. Um, and Josh is my my brother and sister-in-law, um, along with St. Paul's. And they have a vibrant youth community there, and they really engaged in that. And that was fine. You, you don't have to. Come to St. Pat's for their youth group. Get part of that youth group at their house. It was great. And they have in their adult life the, 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 the consistency that they have um, is very impressive. In fact, Josh just continues to um, impress, I guess I would say, that he and some other of his friends have a young men's group that they, they meet on Friday mornings, every Friday morning at 4.30. They get up and they have they have, they have prayer and scripture reading, and they talk about what their week was like. I don't do that. I mean, I like sleep. <laughs> 4.30 on a Friday, you kidding me? Um, but it, it's just, it, it's so nice um, and, and just rewarding uh, to see that. So, I mean, I think, you know, as Mike was reading out of the Word Among Us, you know, Jesus, you know, that uh, uh, we be taught to pray. There, I mean, there's just so much in our, in our church here. There's women's retreats, there's men's retreats, there's Bible studies. Um, so, there's just a lot of great opportunities to grow in your faith. So, you know, hopefully, depending on, you know, where your schedule is and what you are, hopefully you can, you know, start partaking in some of that. Because I know that's how I... You know, I've grown um, in my faith. It's how I've met so many wonderful women here. Um, you know, so it's just nice to be able to, to kind of share your story, much like Mike and I are doing here. We all have a story, and we're, I think we're all striving for the same thing, and that's just to grow our family strong. And this, the Marriage in Christ seminar that we recently got into this year, um, it really is it's a wonderful little seminar. It's a workbook. It's so simple and straightforward. We have, you know, week one, day one, and, and you open up this book, and you got some scripture reading, you got a little meditation, you got some talking points, some prayerful intentions, um, and then some discussion, other discussion topics. 
it's I mean, it's really full. I mean, it's that it's that simple to do. Um, and even with our schedule, she was Tracy's work sometimes will take her and she'll be gone traveling for leave on a Sunday or a Monday and come back on a Friday. And I would have that workbook open and I would take my phone and I would take pictures of the pages and text it to her. And we could still have our our little seminar um, exercises even when she was you know, however many hundreds of miles away. So it really is, yep, it's a plug for the Marriage in Christ Seminar. Um, keep it on your radar. Um, it, it, we've had, um, Bob and Carol were 60, I think almost 60 years of marriage. And they went through the seminar and they were just like, and they've been involved with Marriage Encounter and the tech retreats and different things. And they were just like, this is awesome. This is, this is just, it's so easy. It's just so easy to do. And that true invite uh, to the Holy Spirit to come into your marriage and, and just make it that much more powerful and strong to survive uh, what we're going through in society today. Anybody have anything before we close? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for we thank you for this community. We thank you for these families, these children, and these parents, Lord. And we just thank you for those who led us to our faith, those prayer giants, those grandparents, and and Lord, we just thank them for. Um, passing this tradition down. So we just ask that you um, help families in their prayer time and help them to discover ways to connect, um, be it little or, or large things, or every little bit, um, that we can grow closer to you. We just ask that you bless this evening and um, be with us as we travel home. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.